Yes. So yes. Yes. first of all, let me maybe apologize for my voice. I, I have a very hoarse voice because I have a paralyzed vocal cord. And so, sometimes it just gives out, uh, but I try my best. So uh, anyway, the topic tonight is citizen science at home. Well, what is citizen science? Well, well, I'll be talking about, you know, presenting two uh, websites, iNaturalist and Wikipedia. And this page is just a web page. And the URL is at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, citizenscience.niceweb.com. So I'm just going to use this as basically talking points to navigate these sites live and maybe do some updates, you know, uploads and edits as we go along. So anyway, what is citizen science? Well, the best place to find out, find a definition is probably, you know, Wikipedia, one of our two sites. So according to Wikipedia, this is, you know, community science, crowd science, crowdsource, meaning mass participation. We need a lot of uh, volunteers. So some of you have been doing this volunteer monitoring. And most of us are, you know, amateurs, non-professionals, but that, this doesn't mean that among the crowd there may be some people who are quite expert professionals. So uh, in the Chicagoland area, you probably know the Nature Conservancy is a big player and offers a lot of opportunities for citizen science at the bottom here, right? Citizen science. And uh, many of you have been doing some of this Butterfly monitoring, uh, dragonfly monitoring, some of your bird watchers and so forth, river watch, and monarch and so forth. Uh, we don't need to go, uh, call him frog. Some of you are doing more than more than one frogs and butterflies, right? I know some of you. <laughs> right, Maura? Are you still, still doing that? Anyway, uh, and this offers some resources. So the, probably the number one question volunteers have is ident identification, right? You see a plant or bird or insect. What is this? So there are various online guides that help you identify to species, hopefully. Most of these are not citizen science, but the top three citizen science, Buckeye, iNaturalist, and eBird. Now eBird is just for birds. They specialize on just birds. Buckeye, just bugs, and just North America. So iNaturalist is, in my opinion, the best world-class. They uh, cover the worldwide, all species. So if you're interested in species in you know, biodiversity, this is the place to go. And I'm gonna skip over you know, some links to the Buckeye and Ebert. Some of you have visited those, so those sites for aids in identification. So iNaturalist, I'm gonna dive right in. How does that work? So like most of these other uh, citizen science sites, you need to get a login to contribute. And basically, you know, when you are doing the traditional citizen science, you're doing that outdoors, on-site, you're doing hands-on data collection. And now we're moving indoors. Many of you are, you're staying home. We're doing this online uh, at these two sites. And like these other uh, citizen science sites, you need to get a login to submit your observations and your observations can be photos, mostly photos probably, but also uh, audio. And uh, we want good quality observation. 
And so the, the goal is to reach uh, what's called, uh, I have to move this toolbox out the way I can see everything, but the research grade. So good quality observation reaches something called research grade that can be useful for actually scientific research by professionals. What does that mean? Your photo or, or your audio should have a date, that's no problem. Location, uh, preferably GPS coordinates, photo or, or audio. And a wild organism, meaning not captive or cultivated, so not a lion at the zoo, for example, or your cat or tomato plant from your garden. But if you have, you know, satisfied these requirement then, requirements, then you try to ID that, that uh, species to species, meaning uh, that organism to species, meaning genus, and species that binomial as, as best as you, if you, as you can. If you can't, uh, even if you just say this is a plant, that's, that's a good enough to start. But if you can specify species, you can reach research grade when more than two or three identifiers agree on that ID. And you are an identifier. So if you specify ID of a bird, for example, and you have another user who agrees with that ID, that's two out of two, out of two 100%, that's research grade. But if you have a third individual, so you have three identifiers and one of them disagrees with the, the other two, you are not more than two out of three. So that does not qualify as cash uh, as research grade. It's it's uh, reverse to what's called casual. It's okay to be casual. Uh, many of my my uh, observations are still in the casual stage. Or or if you if you take a picture of your cat, that's okay. But it will never reach uh, research grade. And I'm gonna. I won't go over all these other things. Let's take a look at one example of uh, observation I made. You can say Forbes C, Forbes Tree Cricket. Can you see that? Research grade? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, that. it's got a date. The observation date was 2014. I submitted last year, but that's okay. Got a location here, the Native Forest Preserve. I got my picture. In this case, I actually have an audio. I won't play that for now. But uh, yeah, so uh, I have some notes. I say this, is, this individual is stridulating, meaning he is singing with his wings. He's vibrating his wings, making sounds to attract the female, oops, what did I do? To attract the female. Uh, so you can upload a, an, an audio. I also have a video, but iNaturalist does not support a video. So I put that on a YouTube and just made a link. I won't play that for now, but so let's look at the rest of these. This is research grade because here on the, Right, it says uh, community taxa three uh, or three out of three IDs. So I identified it as Ecanthus forbsi. And later on, two other identifiers also supported my ID. Actually, I just need one, one more, Nancy. Actually, <laughs> can you see this her profile picture? It's a tree cricket. <laughs> She's an expert. And this Brandon Wu, his profile pic picture is another like a cricket. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I said, it's good. But I only need one more to reach uh, research grade. So it's good. I have three. Three out of three is good. Annotations here on the right. 
uh, these creatures alive, you should take your time to annotate as best as you can. Most people don't. This is optional. Unfortunately, most of them don't. Life stage is adult. It's a male. Why do I know it's a male? He's singing. He's attract, trying to attract a mate. And projects, I'll skip over the projects for now, but a couple of projects have included my observation. Tags, I said, it's, this is like hashtags in social media. So I say this is courtship and I can click on that. So it's just like on social media, if you hashtag something and you do a search on that tag, you'll find all the uh, other posts in your social media. So this is finding all the observations in the world that that's doing this courtship and you can use the set of filters. You see the, the, the that tab on the top right here. So you can uh, narrow that down. You don't want to see all these stuff categories, for example. Uh, the top one here it says genus Simpitium. It's hard to identify that two species. It's a metal hog, it's a dragonfly. But then you got some birds in there that disagree. So if you say, well, I don't want to see the birds in there. So you can, uh, I just want to see the insects. So you can hover over this insect icon, click on that. So you will refine your, your search, uh, your, your hashtag, your tag. Uh, you see the description tags here? It says courtship. It, it fills that in for you. So you can narrow that to the category. In this case, insects. It's still the whole world. Maybe I said, well, that's too much, you know, you, this, it's probably hundreds of, of these observations. So in the place here at the, near the bottom here, I can specify, I, I just have to type that in. I say, I, say, I would say DuPage County, and you would start to make suggestions that you type DuPage County in Illinois. So I just wanna see those. You see it's starting to narrow that down on the left here. I don't know if you saw that. And I can narrow that further to just my observations. I don't want to see anybody else. So let's get this, that filters box out of the way. Can you see that? That's all my observations in DuPage County. I may have made observations of courtship of insects elsewhere, but this is just DuPage County. Okay, so this is a very powerful uh, searching. And if you look back at the search filters, so you can combine many of these. So you can say, I want to do the insects and you know the place and all, all that stuff. And maybe not just my photos, and, or you can say just sounds, for example. Only the sounds. Oh, or I still have the insect, so, so I, I can, un Unclick that insect. Oh, I still have the do page count. It's still showing just one. Uh, the place down here, do you see that do page county? If I delete that, okay, sounds. You can see, well, other individual, other so, uh, citizen scientists have recorded uh, birds, right? Northern pintail and the cardinal with sounds. So you can combine these into things called projects that are permanent collections of these. Okay, any questions on this before I move back to my observation? So this is a powerful set of filters and you can make a, uh, I probably have done a lot of this. So let me get back to my Forbes tree cricket. So that's what the tags are. And this other things, uh, you know, this is almost like social media. People are competing to be top identifiers of the species. But uh, so these projects are that kind of uh, specialized uh, search. I, I made the uh, Danella Forest Preserve. So I just said, well, okay, everything in Danella Forest Preserve uh, you can look at that. And this is somebody else, audio observations from a, around the world. And that automatically includes my observations in there. So 
I think that's all I want to say about my observations. We, uh, let's look at the species page, Ecanthus Forbesi. Click on that. And so this is a, like a guidebook. You got your images. There's a lot more, you can view more. And again, here's some com competition top observer and so forth. Seasonality, that's a nice chart, right? When do you expect to see the species by month? And you can select by other categories like sex. So if you annotate it, the male and female, you can see interesting patterns perhaps, but not enough people, you know, do the annotations you know, to make this really useful. In my opinion, you should do it. A lot of, a lot of even the, the experts don't do it. So the, the, the images, so this is like a great, you can click on view more, all the images of the species. Again, you can uh, say, by sex, I only want to look at the males. How great is that? How often do you ask, you know, I see this bird, but it's a male or female, not just the species. So male and female, and you can ask, well, how do I tell? Well, maybe you can't tell by just pictures, but photos sometimes can help. By the way, I'm not hearing any questions, uh -uh, so feel free to speak up. I don't know if I just muted everyone. And, uh, if you can't talk, uh, you can send a message or whatever. Anyway, so we got this. And oh, this this about, we, there's several tabs here. This about page is sort of the description part of our, our online guide. And you say source is Wikipedia, so and Naturalist doesn't have its own collection of descriptions of our, our online guide. That, that's what you need to know what the difference is between this species and other three species, three crickets, right? So it's outsourced to Wikipedia as a partner. Let me look at these other tabs, the map, arrange map. Sometimes it's useful to see, you know, where uh, the species has been reported. That helps you sometimes to to identify taxonomy, this whole tree of where our species resides in this, this scheme. You, you don't have to worry about this kingdom, class and sector and so forth. You, you should try to identify to, to genus and uh, the species. But if you can't, if you just say, oh, that's a cricket, uh, family quality, true, true crickets. Or maybe just Osaptera. I'm not sure even if that's a cricket or grasshopper. That's okay. You can, you can maybe hope somebody else, a more expert that Nancy or that Brendan Wu will come along and try to and help you with that. Peter? Yeah. Um, you were wondering if anybody has questions. I just thought I would interject that anybody that yeah, feel free. want to ask a question can put their cursor on the on the mute. If you put your cursor on your picture, you'll see where you can, it says unmute and mute. So if you're, if it says unmute, you can click on that and it will then you can talk and be sure to mute it again when you're finished asking your question okay bye okay thank you i was yeah i, I hope i'm not, not the only one that's talking all the time but i, I want to go get back to to my observations so my observations so when you make the id here's this compare to highly useful it gives you side by side photos of similar species that probably one of these, if, if it's not, you know, the fourth street cricket together with that range map, I think this is highly useful. I think unique among citizen science sites you'll see. 
Same thing. So let me get back to the, the species page. So the taxonomy, don't worry too much about the higher level status. Conservation is just endangered or least concern or something. Very little is known about the species or so nothing. Established means is this introduced from somewhere else. We don't, we don't have any information on that. But this similar species, how useful is this? So, so this is another uh, version of the compare tool. In this case, it just shows you two of the most likely, the most often misidentified. How do they know that? How does iNaturalist I, I know that the, the, the black horned tree cricket is the most similar to our fourth tree cricket? It's because from us, from users, from people like me, if I had misidentified that as a black horned tree cricket, that goes into the, this artificial intelligence database. And I think this is world-class. Let me tell you, this, uh, they call it computer vision, being able to identify or make suggestions for, for ID based on a photograph. This is a world-class. This alone, I think, is worth the price of admission to, to become a member. Oh, you don't need to be a member to see this, but, but to contribute, even when you make a mistake, it adds value to this, to this database. Mm -hmm. How often do you go out there and say, well, gee, what kind of sparrow is that? <laughs> this will help you. So that's the similar species. Any questions? So I think uh, we can get into the Wikipedia portion of this species. Okay, I'll just click on this link. Bring up the Wikipedia page. And so Wikipedia is the partner for uh, this, this online guide. So your iNaturalist has all the photos, all the analytics, the range maps and everything, but no description that tells you how to tell this, you can't just foresee from this other thing. You can't just nick a corner, the, the black horn cricket. Now I wrote this page, but I'm not an expert on tree cricket at all. When, so when I wrote this, I have to do a lot of research. The references, remember, uh, uh, I, I guess uh, I haven't, discuss this yet, but uh, when you write a Wikipedia article, you, you need to supply your, your source. For it. So when you say uh, this description, this species has a yellowish head, it's not just because I say so, or I heard you know, Pat say that uh, the wild ones picnic or something, you should cite your source. And I myself, I'm not an expert, I, I wrote this, why did I write this? I'm not an expert because nobody else did. <laughs> and uh, so, if you go up, like, a, if you go up to the genus level for Wikipedia, here's all the species. The ones in red have no articles on them at all. Yeah. It's waiting for people like you to start writing. Don't don't think you're not capable. You, I know nothing about three crickets. Believe me, until I made made a photo, I I recorded this video. So among other things that's useful for, for Wikipedia, it supports video. You can embed that right in there. You don't have to put that on YouTube. So I say in my notes here, well, the, the way to, to tell the two species is to count the number of pulses per second, that, that number of chirps. So you can have a photo, uh, so a uh, species page, uh, but some species pages don't have any photos at all. That's okay. But uh, you know, photos, uh, the male street relating, but a picture, you know, that, that picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is worth a thousand, a million words probably. So I'll play this uh, very briefly. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's vibrating its wings at a high rate each time it, it vibrates, it emits 
a sound wave, and let's diagnostic how the rate. I said this, now I'm not an expert, but I read this, I, actually I'm a guy actually. My, my link, so when I did the research, uh, yeah, let me see, Buckeye, right? Here's my, <laughs> here's what, where I found out about it. And for this video, I actually took the audio clip and made this sonogram. So, so what this is, is just counting the, you know, the, the sound wave, the decibels is every time it makes a chirp, this, this, thing, this wave goes up. And uh, so I can count it according to my calculations, this. How, how do you make that kind of a recording? Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a tool called, I think, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing blank. You, re Somebody, you record uh, it with your camera? No, 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 this is from my video. A video, okay, yeah, yeah. well, video camera, right? Well, I, I recorded the video. Yeah. This this video, by the way, you know, I, I don't remember playing this again, but, uh, you know, this is v, VP9 video. You don't have to worry too much about it, but, but uh, with, with the, uh, oh, I, Oh, the, the tool I use is called Audacity. So, you know, the, the video, I had to convert it to WebM to, to upload it to, to uh, Wikipedia. And then I took the audio, so I fired up this uh, Audacity. And yeah, it's, that's a audio processing program. And it will give you this. Wow. But sometimes it's useful. So, you know, to, uh, so this is an illustration of this description of uh, our, our online guide, uh, photo, <laughs> video, a graph, but make sure you, so you, you can, you can, you can do this. You can, you can, you can. Uh, so, so if so we have time, hopefully I'll show you how to maybe get started in writing a Wikipedia. When, when we were when we were practicing a few days back, you were showing us a, a bumblebee on oh, a flower, cool. and we followed both. Okay, of so let's let's do this. Yeah. Uh, that again. Let's that do okay? this. So let's get back to uh, iNaturalist. The bumblebee, Zalacoba virginica. This is my observation. So I got a bum bumblebee. I got some notes in here. And by the way, it's visiting a milkweed and uh, it's got pollinia. And uh, I don't know if you know what pollinia is. I decided to tag that. You can then click on that to search for, for all the insects and maybe birds and, and plants that have this the pollinia is this, uh, can you see this, the pollen packets? That flower does not look like a milkweed. Yes, excellent, excellent point. So this, this bee has been visiting a milkweed and then came to, came to this phlox paniculata. I think that's a phlox paniculata. Excellent point. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I, I just say, he has been visiting a milk, milkweed. <laughs> it's a research way. So, but anyway, on this photo, you can- You need an app for me to help you with that. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's all good. I, I'm pretty sure I muted my phone. I don't know why it's talking. Anyway. Suppose you want to ID just the flower in addition to the bee. You can do that in one observation. So I'm going to upload. You can upload the same picture in a separate. So I'm going to open up a, 
So I, I click on that upload and I can, uh, I can use the same photo, but I, I made a different crop of the same pictures just to highlight the, uh, the flower rather than the bee. And notice, hey, I need a date. It knows the date. I need a location. It knows, uh, it knows the location. Let me, you know, I shouldn't cl click on that. It knows the location. <laughs> you think, question? Yeah, many, some uh, digital cameras can store GPS, especially your, your cell phone camera. So that's good. And by the way, if you use a photo processing software, make sure it saves all that, uh, what's called the metadata, the XF metadata. And if you do that, th these fields will be populated for species name, the flux, and this is that computer vision. I talked about this artificial intelligence. Wow. It makes suggestions. Pretty sure this is a genus, but in particular, Zanacoba virginica. The computer I was looking at the bee. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe you know, it suggests, well, it could be a bombus, I don't know. But it could also be this flux paniculata, right? But that's, yes, how cool is that? I suggest that, it's, I can type that in manually, but I take the suggestion, no problem. In my notes, I can say things like the, the pollinia, but I'll say something like the, the, the bee, just like a, you can, you know, write notes in there, the bee is whatever the Zai Hapu Lo Kopa. Virginica. Am I typing that right? The spell check says I might. Silo, I don't know. But I should also say cap, captive. Because uh, let me get back to this page. I took this photo at the modern arboretum. Actually, it's in a flower bed. So it's not a wild. It was planted. Do I want to do some of these other things? Oh, tags. Maybe I'll do the same thing, pollinia. Just so uh, this observation, you know, some people do a lot of these tags, just like some people over use, you know, oops. But I, I could, I click select, I, I, I don't know what I click. All right. By the way, this DuPage County, it, it knows I'm in DuPage County. But if I want to be more specific way in DuPage, you can pin the places you go often. Arrowhead Park is right across my, so I've been going to these places and one operation is one of my pinned locations. So it's gonna say, well, this is where you were. Well, actually the pin location is just one GPS, I could be, wanting me all around, uh, but this is pretty close. I know that flower bed is right, right there. So I have to click on that. It's hard for me to click on that because it's two bars in the way. So now it says more than operated instead of just DuPage County. So I think I'm ready to submit any questions. I, I'm. So now the observation, oh. Hi, Peter. Yeah. Hi, it's Susan. Um, Susan. I, I rely on my iPhone camera and I have a feeling yours is a lot better than mine, but um, how, how, how good do your photos have to be to be accepted? A lot, no, there's no, there's lots, lots of cell phone photos. In fact, mm -hmm. they have a cell phone app. Lots of people just take take a photo and then click, you know, one click. Basically, because your cell phone is going to record the date and the, the GPS. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very. So here's my observation. It's always casual because it's uh here. Uh, let me see. 
organism is wild, thumbs down. <laughs> you see mm -hmm. that? Yes. You'll never reach research grade, but it's okay. You 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 know you may be interested in like pollinia, or you may be interested in how what kind of insect visit the, the, the species, or you may be interested in you know where they are. And so it's it's okay. So there, that's my observation. Pretty easy, right? The computer will even help you if you're not sure it's frogs. Again, you can go back to compare. You already made a suggestion, so. Uh, it's maybe looking like other, other uh, flux-like things. Highly useful, in my opinion. How often are you confused among the fluxes? Huh? Or among the xylocopa? Is this a, is this a, you know, cover the bee or is that a humble bee? <laughs> Highly useful. So if you use your cell phone, there won't be any difference in the time between the observation and the submission of the Well, app. there'll be a few hours. Oh, 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 a few minutes if you just use the, the app. I've never used the app. But, but yeah, if you click and then open up the app, even if you have very fast fingers, it probably take you at least a minute. But yeah, the, the, the date may be the same. Okay. So how did your first observation, there was a six year interval between the observation and the it's submission. Be, it's because I only recently became a iNaturalist last year during the, the, the lockdown, the pandemic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't have to, I have observations made even before that, what, what was it, 2014, you know, I've, I've, yeah. People do that all the time. I you reach back into a memory lane, yeah. Oh, well, Peter's been taking photos of insects for a long time. So yeah, in fact, you know, uh, four, three quick, and I should, I should get back to this. And on quick, we can probably move on to quick Wikipedia pretty soon. It's very transparent, you know, who, who created this me? It was December, not so long ago. And other editors can come along and contribute this, this individual called Plant Drew. Anyway, so talk about when, when I took these photos. Let, let me see. So uh, one of my uh, references, the citations is from Buckeye, so let me try to open. So this is the species page for Buckeye still. So I stole a lot from, from this, you know, all, all this. By the way, that, that uh, chirps per second is dependent on temperature. So you have to write down your temperature. And here's actually my original sonogram from back then. Slightly different because I was using uh, that year's version of, so you can see, uh, yeah, that was 2014. Back then I was just doing Buckeye. And now, by the way, you know, this, I had a lot of conversations with this Wisconsin E, you can see Nancy. See, I, so I got some, some information from her. Uh, she's a tree cricket specialist. And actually, if I go back to my, uh, my iNaturalist page, my observation, it turned out to be the same individual in 2020 who did the ID for me, Nancy Collins. I hope she doesn't mind my she, she's this, <laughs> she has a profile picture of a tree cricket and yeah, she has written two books and, and yeah. So you, you, you never know in this uh, uh, citizen science, you'll you're, you're make virtual friends. So let me move on. 
Uh, I talked a little bit about projects, guides, lists, journals. These are just different ways of diving into the uh, into that searchable database. Uh, is, is Daniel here? Daniel Aether. So this is called a journal or a journal post. So he wrote this whole big thing on this Persicaria amphibia, whether the, the variety should be uh, considered to be uh, distinct species. I, now this is very nice, except again, you know, it, it's in his space. It's not on the, on the species page. So I got in touch with him. He has another virtual friend. And after a while we wrote this, this uh, I wrote this Wikipedia, not, not the whole page, but just the, the varieties. Uh, so this is a kind of collaboration that can then occur between iNaturalist, all these, if you, these pictures are from, from iNaturalist. Actually, you don't have to, you know, restrict your, your photos to, to uh, iNaturalist. Uh, Wikipedia has its own vast collection of photos. But uh, and let me move on to Wikipedia then. So that's maybe a, uh, I try to be, uh, any questions? Uh, so if you want to be a Wikipedia and do start editing articles like that, even you know, like a whole article or just a subsection of that. We, so the five pillars are the main things about Wikipedia you should abide to or know about. It's an encyclopedia, no problem. Neutral, you know, try to be not subjective. Well, when you write about tree cricket or, or that persecaria, what does it mean neutral? It means, well, you need to be accurate and cite reliable authoritative sources. Buckeye is an authoritative source. Facebook is not social media. Don't 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 say I, I saw you know Larry said something on this on, on Facebook or Twitter. Free, it's free, free, free. And, and if, uh, usually that logo here says you know Wikipedia does free encyclopedia. They mean it. Anyone can use, edit, and distribute. But in particular, it's a license free. Royalty free. Uh, you cannot assign a true copyright to your work. So if you are a professional photographer, you want to sell your, your high resolution photo for profit, don't do it here. All your photos are freely licensed. You have different degrees of license. Respect and uh, civility. Uh, we, no firm rules. These are just guidelines. So. Uh, Again, this is a bigger, uh, we don't need to go over everything. You need an account, learn the five pillars we just did. Be bold, but not reckless. That's, that's a good advice. Same thing applies to being iNaturalist. Don't be afraid to make mistakes over there. Your mistakes actually drive add data to that uh, artificial intelligence database, but not reckless, right? Just don't make a wild guess. And, and don't infringe on copyright. So you're, when you upload stuff or when you write things, uh, you're giving Wikipedia license to use your stuff. So let's dive right into perhaps doing some add an image. Here's a naturalist, an observation, up long, Wall color B and Thidium oblongatum. I have two two images, so you can actually you know, have two images. The reason is called wall color B. Uh, is I don't know if you can see this. It's collecting wool or this hair on the stem of this plant. Collecting hairs for nesting material. I don't know if you see that. 
So I think that's in interesting behavior. Uh, this is uh, research grade, I believe. I just need one more person to agree with me that this is the Anthidium oblongatum. I think we have two species, both introduced, but uh, but this is a research grade. So, uh, and that's, so that's the uh, observation on the uh, I natural sky. Let's look at the Wikipedia page. I think I can add that image because here it just has an image. Can you see that? That looks like a preserved specimen from a, from a museum that can be improved. The only other image here is there's a caption that says copula looks like the copulating mating. Otherwise, this is a very rudimentary skeleton of a, right? Just have one sentence and then just the synonyms, not much. And uh, in fact, at the bottom it says it's, this is a stuff. Sometimes you say that, you see that, uh, it's not much. So I think we can improve on that. So I think I want to add that, that image. So how do you do that? On the left, contribute, get a login. By the way, you don't need a login. Anybody can, see, when they say anybody can edit this page, you can edit and see what the code is. Not much code actually, that's it. But uh, anybody can edit, you can try this at home. If you don't have a login, it will let you log in, uh, I mean, edit and make changes, <laughs> it's amazing. But I, I logged in as a user, so I'm gonna click on upload file. And this is important, upload to Wikipedia and uh, Wikimedia Commons rather than upload to Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is actually a very large universe of different what they call projects or namespaces. What's the difference between Commons and Wikipedia? Remember, freely licensed, usually your own, my own. Sometimes you, if you have want to upload non-free, I'll talk about that later to Wikipedia. This is a big source of confusion. Confusion. A lot of people don't know how to do this. For non-free, it's special. But this is Wikipedia Commons. I just do the, the, the usual thing. So I'm going to, I was at this uh, Wildlife Prairie Park. I don't know if you've been there it's near Aurora. So this, these are my images I upload to uh, iNaturalist. Actually, you can import directly from iNaturalist. There's a tool for doing that. But in this case, I want to show you how to upload from your own collection on your hard drive. So I'm going to upload it. You know, if you've done uploading for any of these uh, social media, this is my own work. You can actually upload somebody else's work, but that gets a little more complicated. And so you give an image title, that's the name of the, so that's a actually the name of my uh, file, so that's okay. And they want a caption and often I just use the same, I just copy and paste. You can, you can write a different caption to that if you like. Description, so the more detail on this Anthidium oblongatum, but in this case, maybe I'll say something like, uh, I'll give the common name as, again, so I'll try to copy and paste. Oblong, wool colored bee. Oh, I, did I accidentally open up some? I, up, I think I accidentally opened up these. I hit some control key there, but here I say, Wool, uh, wool color B and it's cutting wool. Cutting means collecting. That's why it's a, it's a wool color B. Cutting wool, it's a hairy stem. Peter, why and does it want that uh, hairy stem? For its nest. Its nest has to be hairy. I don't know. You, you have to ask him. You know, why do some bumblebees collect you know, spider silk, I don't know. You have to ask him. <laughs> Good question. But the date is there, location, it, this is optional, but you know. It's uh, not really wool. Well, they call it wool. 
It's worry. Don't it's ask me why. I, 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 huh? It stems of a plant, hairs from a plant. Yeah, but you, if you say hairy, it's not hair. So I didn't, I didn't give it the common name. This is a common name. Well, it's it's some sort of it's a filament. It's yeah, you you can say it's not wool. But what do you want to call it? Yeah. Hair. It's something. It's not hair. It's not keratin. Both wool and, and hair. I mean, birds put a lot of different things in their nests. You know, sticks and feathers and. Yeah, I, I understand <laughs> the question. You know, it's not wool, but this is a common name. People people say that all the time. You know. Uh, the koala bear, it's not a bear. Don't, don't argue with common names, they, they don't make sense. So the GPS, yeah, it'll give you a nice where, where this place was, Wildlife Prairie Park. And other information category. So think of this again, like uh, tags, hashtags, how people can find. You can, you can use the species. Uh, often the species is good, people want to, want to find this by species. So species is a good category, for example. Oh, I, I copied, oh, I was, go, I was trying to copy this, sorry. Copy and paste. It doesn't have a category called, called upload, so I delete that, it was in red. Oh, it keeps, I can do that, oh, whatever. But something else, you know, I'll, I was at this, uh, I'll just type this, uh, see if it's such as wildlife, prairie park, maybe that's, oh, here, yeah. Wildlife, prairie park, or wildlife state park, what's a big difference, I don't care. But this is optional, it's just tagging. So I'll, I'll finish. And here, it took me a long time to say, what, what does it mean? It's asking you to depict, what is it doing? You're cutting wool, I don't know. Oh, I can just say it's anthidium opening, you know, I didn't do it there. Let me see if I can copy that or type that in manually. Okay, a species of insect, this, that's good enough. This is optional, you don't have, just uh, other people can find this. I don't know why there's a depict, and in uh, categories. So thanks for that. So you, to use a file in a wiki, so you can just copy, copy and paste this, this thing, file, you see this? This whole thing you can, uh, you can just can click, it, it's, it's gonna put that in your clipboard. And where is my, Oh, I think I, I think I lost my uh, ad. I go back to this. So hopefully I got that in my clip. So I'll do an edit. Now this is the Wikipedia markup code. You don't need to fully understand how this works, but some of this is self-explanatory taxa. In Anthidium obligatum, it needs to know what species this is. The image was that, you know, the, 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 the one from the uh, museum. And here's that copular image. Somebody has already put that in there. I'm gonna add mine. Peter, there's a question in the chat okay. window. Okay. Um, well, first somebody asked if the, why does it collect the hairs off this time? I think we established that it lines its nest with that. And yeah, why well, understand? You, you have to ask, you have to ask the bee, don't ask me. That may be hair <laughs> on other parts of the. So the other question uh, from uh, Paulus, Jill Paulus, uh, is, is the bee, is this bee rare? Is this it bee? rare or is it pretty commonly found? It's, I, th I think it's fairly common, it's an introduced species. But introduced? I, yeah, okay. I don't think it's common enough to be like uh, invasive. Okay. It's fairly when, common. 
and you found it, it in many times. the park. Um, and yeah. what kind of a plant was it collecting? Do you know? Oh, I don't remember. Okay. It's, it's probably uh, 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 ornamental. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, something with a hairy stem. Yeah, something with a. It's at this wildlife prairie park, but it's at a at a, at a flower flower bed. Probably a just cultivated. Okay. Yeah, if I took a picture of the plant, that, that probably would be a uh, you know cultivated. But but if a bee is visiting that, it's fine. So I just copy and paste. It. So it's almost the same thing, right? File this this file name. Thumb means it's a thumbnail. Left means it's on the left side. If you don't say left, I think it's default to right. And the last one, copula for for that, is just a caption. So I I just say I just say cutting. Okay. Well, thank you for answering that. I don't see any other questions up there right now. Is you know I I I have to I should finish this. I, I okay. I'm trying to you know back backspace without destroying everything else. Harding will so before you publish preview. So it, it rearranged that we uh, at a late, little bit uh, lower, but that's okay. But here's my my follow it says cutting was the, the the caption. So those, that's all I did. I just inserted that, right? I didn't do anything else. I changed the caption a little bit. The default caption is just my file name. Yeah, I'm not sure why this, he moved the, uh, the, that image to, to the bottom. I didn't really do anything. Maybe I'll try, try this instead of putting above that. You see what I'm doing? I'm just putting that below. Maybe that makes a difference. I'm, I'm not too sure. I'll do a preview. Oh, now it's better. <laughs> it's back to the way it was. And mine is here, which is OK. Sometimes you may want to do like a gallery, so these are together here. But uh, for, for now, this is cool, right? Questions? I, 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 I think I said, said this is a minor edit. I didn't do much with it. And you can say a little note, uh, add image, whatever, of what you did. So other people, other editors can quickly know what you did. Publish. There. Yeah. Not hard. I just copied, you know, and pasted that one thing, one image I just uploaded to Wikipedia Commons. So I've been talking for about what, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, do I, do I have the time to maybe just talk about the wild ones uh, page? Or are the people are ready to stop? Yeah, tell us about the wild ones page. Yeah, you, yeah you can do it. Wikipedia. You know, uh, yeah, we don't have time to create a whole new page, but. Well, that's something that is relevant to us that you put there. Yeah, so again, you can look at the history, what happened to this. I wrote it back in September, but then uh, maybe a couple of other people have made little, little edits to that. So among other things, I think the, the major thing is this has a logo, right? This is our logo. And most logos are copyrighted. That's why if you need to, uh, to like a logo and we, I don't think we have time, unless people want to stick around. So like well, uh, I do, this I do Earth know Watch. Peter, that um, there are guidelines for using the Wild Ones logo. So, you know, um, in the, those of us um, who are board members have access to 
the chapter guidebook and it has all kinds of rules. You have to use the right colors and the right style of print. Yes, I, I got this direct. Yeah, you know, yeah, yours is directly from the website. Yes. And, and in I fact, have some files on my computer that, you know, I have one that has our um, chapter name underneath. Yeah. So, it, so you know, I, this is pretty much the official one I got. Yeah. And it is copyrighted and from a lot of these organizations you know, whatever, United Nations, Red, okay. Red Cross, their logos are copyrighted. Just and above uh, just above the S, I think there's a little symbol that- Yeah, registered trademark is there. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Well, I can't, well, I, I know that's what it is, so I can't, you, well, can't make this, it out from here. Yeah, so with the logos, often they downsize or make it a lower resolution. Well, one thing that has happened with our chapter is that somebody walked off with our signs. <laughs> so I had, you know, an emergency situation. I had to make another sign, which is not, it doesn't conform to all the regulations. So we- Well, I, this is, I'm pretty sure this is the official. Yeah. Right. And since I was a webmaster myself, <laughs> I, I got, <laughs> Do I have the permission oh. from my? Well, I, I shouldn't. I should ask for permission from the board, but I didn't because. No, no, no. You don't have to ask our permission. But when when we get, well, the, the, the national we have outdoor events, I'm, we're going to have to go have some new signs made because, I guess we left them. You know, we thought somebody in our group took them home and nobody had them. So. Well, let me just say, when I am, I wrote this. Yes. I'm not the ideal person to write this because you remember the rules. Uh, avoid, um, I, I mean, I have said this, avoid self-promotion, shameless or otherwise. But, you know, don't write about us. I shouldn't write about the wild ones, but if I don't, nobody else will. So well, you're, it's it's information. But I'm saying, ideally, this should be written by a third party. But if we wait for that, I'll be dead before this, this happens. But I try to be neutral. Mm -hmm. So you know, self promotion is like saying wonderful things. Like why was hey, we just had this wonderful Zoom meeting with this guy Peter Chen? <laughs> it threw thirty five people or whatever it is. You know, or if, if you're writing an article about three crickets, self-promotion saying, I'm the authority. I wrote two books on, on three crickets. Okay. Don't say that. On, uh, so it's, and self-promotion is also often these references. Well, often it's just come our own website. Don't quote from yourself. This is not for a place to quote from yourself. Try to get other people to talk about you. So I managed to find, you know, EPA has stored our uh, PDF, the handbook. That's a good, good site. Yeah. Citation. You know, Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. It's kind of a almost a sister, but it's it's a you know good, good reputable site. Uh, so, but some of these other ones are just from wild ones and you can't really escape it. But sometimes you see a warning on top, it says you're using too many, you know, primary sources, you, you're quoting yourself. So. Well, so you know, can you give the reference, you know, in, in there, did you give the web, you have the website. I see. Yeah, so, so often you say official website. They can go to the website. Oh yeah, so in many of these organizational pages, it has both a website and this organizational box and this external links, you put an official website, those kind of the, the standard, and you can put other things in there, environmental portals or other, other uh, Wikipedia pages uh, that uh, in this, 
of categories. You have a lot of categories and portals. And so you can throw those in your know, native press. So I found a few of these. Now, if you know of some other things that can go in there, let me know, ecology organizations. So you just need to you know, look around. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I think we're, we're kind of uh, really, you know. So if people want to stick around to see how to add a logo, that's different from from that uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons. Maybe you can stick around, but maybe I can uh, take a last round of questions and wrap yeah, up for most people. Should, we should probably close at, a, at about eight thirty. So now's your chance, people. If you have questions to ask or if you want to ask Peter to demonstrate something in specific. Yeah, I mean, doing this ad local does, doesn't take long, five minutes, but you, okay. if you want to stick around. Yeah, huh? go ahead. You want to go ahead? Yeah. Let's, let's do it. So uh, let's watch. See, no local, mm -hmm. right? Maybe we can steal it from the official. Oh. I, I clicked on the website. That's their homepage. That's their local. I will, let's see, view image just to make sure it's, it's a nice local. Yeah. SVG, that's a perfect for local. It means a scalable. Vector graphic is the perfect. It's nice. How do I? So oh, maybe I just say page as. Do you want a copy image? Is that what? No, you want? I, I, I don't know. Uh, let me sit down. Maybe local dot svg. That's good. So now I'm ready to upload file again. I should do this in a new tab. So instead of upload to Wikipedia Commons, locally to Wikipedia, non-free, this is copyright. Mm. I really should have no business even downloading it, but I'm gonna do them a favor. <laughs> Downloads. I just uh, I just installed my uh, Zoom app the other day. <laughs> Local.svg open. There it is. A clear descriptive name. Local for what is it? Earthwatch, right? Is that uh, is that the name of? Let's watch, okay. So this is gonna be the file name for, for, for that image, instead of local.svg. Oh, the, give me a warning. Huh? Seems to be very short. Uh, what else can I say about Earthwatch? I don't know. I don't know much about this organization. So <laughs> Maybe try without the spaces in the name. I don't know. Sometimes these warnings you can ignore, you know. Oh, it, it went away. I just ignore it. Please provide a brief description. I don't know. This logo. Will be used for the organization. You don't have to be that wordy, but uh, article. Something like that. 
provide source, this is a free work? No, this is copyright important. I believe it is fair use or lots of warnings, right? So read through that. This file will be used in the following article. So it's gonna be the, the title of this article. It's called Earth Watch Institute, I'll copy. See what I'm doing? It says article okay, meaning it exists, so it's okay. Now free rationale, blah, blah, blah. You can do an you know, official cover, so you can do an album cover, for example, of uh, uh, music. But here I'm the local of a company. Here's more stuff they want you to, to say. Source, I can just copy this, earthwatch.org. So be careful, you know, and people will check, other editors will check that the, this image will be shown as a primary means of visual identification. Yes, yes. Are you following me now, uh, so far? You said it must be minimal, blah, 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 blah. Don't use more, uh, not more articles. Uh, say the same thing. Use uh, will be, this is part of redundant, right? organization, identity, something like that. It's a little different from, from what I said before. But it gives, gives uh, other editors who, who will uh, scrutinize this and approve or this may possibly disapprove and maybe delete it if it's, if, if it's not, doesn't conform to these. So I think I'm, I'm ready. Uh, this is, and this other choice is not historic person. So, so I think I'm, oh, did I miss something? Because it's, it's not showing me a, uh, Oh, upload, I'm, I'm missing something. So it's, I think those, those couple buttons at the bottom, you have to say some other kind of non-free work? No, no, no. No? No, I already chose this, this is a logo of an organization. So sometimes this thing is not very good. It doesn't know that I already special source. Optional. I agree. I your buttons that below the box need to be checked. Hmm? The buttons below the box look to be. Oh, now they upload. So some, sometimes it just takes a while for this thing to. So this is the file. And. Uh, so I can just copy it. I, I don't need that whole thing. I think. Let's watch. Let's edit this baby. So this, oh, oh says multiple issues. So <laughs> this article contains a written like advertisement. That's what I was saying before. It's, it's self-promotional. Too many primary sources quoting from itself. Uh, we, I'm going to ignore that. A lot of you know nonprofits are like this. So it does have that. Im Wait a minute, it has an image. I don't know where that image is, but maybe that's that's a, a, a bad image border. But uh, I think I, uh, what I want is a low. I'm pretty sure for, for locals, uh, for organizations. So at the top it says info box organization. So there are different kinds of these things called info boxes. I'm gonna include that. So I don't really need these uh, square, square 
brackets, probably not even the file thing, so I'm just going to delete that. Oh, this image, it says HTTPS. I, I don't think that's, that's not right. That's wrong. Actually, maybe what I think, that's, a, that's remember this local to SVG? They made a mistake. It should have been this, but I uploaded already. So let's see what happens. That editor made a mistake, never knew it. Show preview. Ta-da. <laughs> this is a very long article. This, this is the local. So if I'm really picky, if I'm mean, I'll, I'll, I'll delete that image. I think it's this person who, who added this does not know that you cannot do HTTP, you know, that this doesn't work. Okay. This works. So, well, you, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can, before I move, you can put both a local and an image. The local is by definition the, the local, but you can have an image like the front door or something. Ah. So let me publish questions. Well, I just say add local. I will not say this is a minor because local is a big thing in my opinion. Question, yeah. Let's watch. Um, if anybody else has questions, I I was just going to talk about what we're doing for our next meeting since I, nobody's coming up with questions right now, and we it's eight thirty. So, you know, usually um, if we're in a meeting room, and the, you know we go for for an hour, hour and a half, and then we have a little social time at the end. Um, and we're, if we're renting a space, we have a time we need to get out, you know. So we're kind of used to the format of an hour and a half is about the length of our meetings. I, I know it, what I've gleaned from, I'm curious about this, if I have the patience to post things on on the iNaturalist, it's pretty interesting. And yeah, that's that's my whole point. Is I encourage this mass participation, right? This crosswords it needs people. Yeah. Lots of articles are remain. By the way, even if you if you uh, let me see, even if you uh, don't don't take photos, you can be an identifier. Yeah, you can use it as a resource, or and no, you can also even if you don't take photographs. Yeah. So this 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 uses John Asher. He's a authority on bees, Hymenoptera in general. He has no observations, zero. <laughs> he doesn't take any photos, but he has a, like half a million identification. Oh, this wow. guy is prolific. Yeah. Well, He's on yeah. bug guide all the time. He's on. Facebook, various groups, insect yeah. groups. I know his uh, name well. I, I have taken a few insect photos last last summer. Don't uh, be shy. On, uh, like Wikipedia uh, says, be bold. I use I use uh, be bold. <laughs> yeah, be bold. <laughs> Not reckless. This sounds like a soap opera, but yeah. That's kind of, I like that, be bold but not reckless. Yeah. Right, 